questions. Okay. Uh, my name is Jed Stefanowitz. I'm a teacher in Massachusetts in the United States of America. Uh, I taught third grade for 20 years. So eight, nine year olds for 20 years. And I used a lot of technology in my class. And in my school district, I became a leader for other teachers to use technology. So then my job changed to be a technology coach for teachers. So right now I'm in a different district, but my role is called digital learning coach. So I'm uh, an instructional coach, a teacher coach for other teachers to use technology in their classrooms. So just like you, where you uh, have been using Zoom, not so much right now, but for the past two years, we had to survive on Zoom. Um, and some teachers had never used it. Most of us had never heard of it. And everyone had to get really good at it really fast. So <clears throat> my role had been trying to get them to use Google products and trying to have them to um, have students create things with technology. Then we had to learn how to just connect and have school with technology. So the role of a digital learning coach is to support teachers to use technology. My favorite part is I still am in classrooms every single day. I don't want to be a I don't want to be a principal. I don't want to be a director or a professor. I want to be with kids uh, every day, but also having some impact and influence with teachers. That's what I love to do, and that's what's um, for 25 years. That's been my passion. So absolutely, I think you are such a phenomenal teacher and more than that, you are a passionate teacher and that's why you want to be with your students and a real passionate teacher always likes to spend his time or her time with the students. So we are so lucky today to have you as our guest teacher and without wasting our, our precious time with you, I would like to request some of my students to introduce themselves and also... Please. I request them to ask you straight questions. So Ram Lakshmi, and uh, I would like to start with you. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? And after that, you please ask your question. Power to you. Thank you sir. Hi, sir. My name is Ram Lakshmi. I am studying eighth grade. My hobby is reading books, playing games, and watching TV. Can I ask one question, sir? Yes, please. Nice to meet you. Same to you, sir. At what age students in your schools learn digital knowledge? On the first day of school, first day of kindergarten. Um, my goal is to have technology as part of every day, every grade. Um, we have become a school in a school system in a district that every student has a Chromebook or a computer. I think just like you. And for me, it's really important that we don't say, okay, it's <clears throat> Wednesday, two o'clock. Now it's time for technology. Technology time is all day, every day. So for kindergarten students, for five-year-old kids, it might just be learning how to log in for the first time. But they had to learn to connect to do school during COVID. So students are learning all different skills every year. Of course, five-year-olds are learning very basic skills, but eighth graders like yourself, we're connecting across the world, which is pretty amazing. Five years ago, we wouldn't have thought to do this and we wouldn't have the tools to do it. Now we can. So now I get to talk to you, morning here, nighttime there. It's like looking into the future. Thank you for your question. What a great question. Okay. What time, how, old, how old did you start learning digital learning? In fact, uh, in fact, we are uh, we were badly need the digital because in our schools we actually are uh, public school students. My students are public school students, and I am also working in a public school. Unfortunately, the infra infrastructure facilities that we have uh, don't support any digital literacy. Uh, so all my students they learn they get to know the knowledge of digital uh, knowledge only through mobile phones that they have at their home. And uh, other than that, uh, we don't have any particular uh, curriculum in our school uh, uh, system to support. So uh, you're, all on, you're all on your own phones right now? Yeah, no, no, actually my students have the phones because through the phones they are connected now, they are connecting the, the, this particular session. 
Wow. So is that why we can is that why we connect on Facebook and not um, email? Uh, in fact, the phones that they have are not their own, their parents' phones they are, uh, they're, they're using at the moment. So, I see. Well, thank you. Tell your parents thank you. I think some of them are in the background. So thank you, yeah, yeah. mom and dad. Maulika, All right, more questions. Let's go. Maulika, it's your turn. Go ahead, mom. <clears throat> Yes, sir. Hi, sir. This is Monica. I am seventh grade student. My hobbies are reading books, playing games, and watching TV. Can I ask you one question, sir? Yes, please. How how many students do you have in your school? So, in my school, there are about four hundred students. We're grade kindergarten all the way to grade five, and there's about four classes at every grade. And every grade, every class has about 20 students in it. I'm actually home today. There's no school today. So I'm, this isn't my classroom. This is a very comfy room in my house. But we have about 400 students in my school. And my school district has four elementary schools. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, Monica. All right, who's next? Look at all these hands, I love it. Yeah, um, yes. Bhagyasri, go ahead and ask the question. So, hello, sir, my name is Bhagyasri. I'm studying edit. My hobbies are reading books and playing games. Can I ask one question, sir? Yes, you all love to play, read books and play games and watch TV, just like me. Yes, sir. What is digital literacy? Could you please explain about it? Sure. Uh, in fact, I just wrote a book. This book is what I believe digital literacy is all about. It's Digital literacy is not just learning how to use a computer or a phone or a camera. It's about how to use a computer, phone, or camera to help you learn. And my belief is that technology uh, should best be used by students like you to create content. In some schools, students are in front of screens and they're consuming content. You know, they might be playing games or doing activities and they're just kind of staring at their screen. I, my vision is students are using technology to connect, to create, to design new ideas and experiences. Um, so my book is called Take Aim, and what AIM means, A is for activate. So activate content. So right now you're learning about another country, another school system. Your teacher has had you active, right? We're all connecting, we're doing, this is something we're experiencing. That's activating. And we're using technology to do it. I is innovate, something new and different. What a great way we get to have a global conversation right now. So the I in AIM is innovate. And M is motivate, motivate learners. Hopefully you feel excited to learn. You do activities and projects that are interesting and fun for you. If students are just completing worksheets and then handing them in and they get corrected, that's very old fashioned. That's no fun for me. It's no fun for you. It's, and it's not a great way to tell how much you're learning and what are you creating. So for me, digital literacy is learning how to use technology creatively, but also responsibly. So digital citizenship is how are we using technology safely, responsibly? Who are we connecting with online? So even, even this conversation, I, I went to make sure this was a, a real person who was contacting me because I didn't know. Sometimes you don't know who you're connecting with. So great question, thank you very much. I hope, uh, I hope that answered your question. So Shaili. It's up to you. So, Shaili, over to you. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. My name is Shaili, a seventh grader. My hobbies are reading books, playing games, and drawing pictures, sir. My life ambition is to become a doctor. Shall I ask you one question, sir? Yes, but I might want to see one of the pictures you draw, too. What kind of technology do your students use in classroom? 
Okay. Students use um, Chromebooks. I don't know if, uh, if you have access to Chromebooks, but a Chromebook is a laptop um, that is very easy for students to use. School in my school district home, we could still connect to school. So we use a lot of Chromebooks. We use iPads. Um, we share iPads to create, to make videos, to do activities, to show what they know. Um, we also, my exciting area is also robots. Um, very easy robots for kids. So <clears throat> robots that roll on the floor. And what students are doing is learning how to code, learning how to program. And when they're programming robots, you would love it because it's a very simple challenge. How do you get this ball to move across to here or around something? So students are learning. I don't know if you've had any coding experience of your own, but that is an example of active learning, innovating with new tools. So I have a lot of really cool uh, robots in my in my program too. Hmm. What electives does your school provide to your students? Did you say electives? Yeah, electives. Yes, um, <clears throat> so interestingly, I my students are young. Uh, in terms of electives, there aren't uh, students don't choose their programs. So students the curriculum or the, the content that we, we teach for students, uh, the teachers decide, the principals decide. So there aren't electives. There are some after school clubs and there are activities and choices that students can sign up for, but those choices are after school as well. What I really like are some of the choices that teachers can provide in class for how students finish work. So what I mean by that is a student might make um, a presentation, a student might make a poster, a student might make a drawing, a student might make a podcast. So it might be different from electives the way you're asking, but I do think giving choices for students is always great because you might learn differently than Monica, Monica might learn differently from Ramesh. So you all have different ways you wanna show what you know and what you're able to do. Thank you, sir. Digital learning is so important because technology is just amazing. Technology gives us opportunities. It gives students opportunities and it gives teachers opportunities. It gives me the chance to talk to you in India. It gives you the chance to learn about different schools and cultures and kids. Technology is more than just TV, more than just movies, more than just um, like I said earlier, consuming. You're not, we're not just watching programs anymore. We're connecting and creating. It also allows you to work together with partners. It allows you to use your phone to ask questions and get answers. You can find an answer on your phone faster than your teacher can tell you, right? So now teachers have to teach differently. Teachers don't give all the information anymore because you can find the answer and information on phones or computers. So teachers have to change the way that they're teaching as well so that in classrooms, kids are creating, kids are connecting, kids are collaborating, working together. So for me, that's why technology is so important. Plus every job that you talk about, your aspirations for your future, require a lot of technology and a lot of digital uh, literacy and competency. So the more you can build your skills now, the better you'll be to get those jobs you want and be successful. What is your state famous for? So that's what she's asking. Ah, what is our state famous for? Mm. Well, have you ever heard of the Boston Red Sox, our baseball team? Oh. Right now, today is the first day of Red Sox baseball. It's called opening day. It's a very exciting day in Massachusetts. It's the first day of the baseball season, and the Red Sox are our team. We're a very famous team. We also have a very famous running race on Monday called the Boston Marathon, also famous in Massachusetts. But I think more importantly, 
Massachusetts is famous very early on in the history of the United States as the United States became its own country separate from England, a lot of the first events uh, of that war happened right here in Massachusetts. A very famous one is called the shot heard round the world. And there were two battles that happened very close to where I live uh, in the 1700s. And that is what, when the, uh, the United States of America changed from being colonies of England to a new united group of states with its own constitution. So Massachusetts is very famous for being one of the early places that gave America its freedom. Very great question, wow. <clears throat> to become anyone digitally literate without the elective systems that you have in your school. And during my 45 day stay in the United States of America, I spent one week time in middle school where I happened to see many classes. So the interesting part of my stay in the school for one week was the elective system. The students, uh, they are the, so interested in their chosen electives. I mean, some of them opted digital technologies, agriculture, music, and different, uh, uh, um, different subjects they opted. And uh, so what I learned that um, they have a lot of respect and interest for the electives rather than the core subjects. Uh, so that's what is so, um, so curious about your education system. So this girl asked, of course, asked the, the one question, uh, is it possible to, for any student of your school or maybe any part of United States of America uh, to, to be a digital literate without this elective system that is uh, prevalent in your uh, schools? Um, yes, Nandini, that's a very good question. It's a hard question. Uh, I think, I think yes. I think students could uh, improve digital literacy, but they wouldn't have the experience and the opportunity. So right now, think of this, you have a phone that your parents are letting you use to connect. You're gaining experience, you're building skills your friends or other kids in your school who aren't doing this experience, it's still possible for them to achieve their goals, but you have just extra skills that you are building for yourself. So it is possible, but I think the more opportunities and the more experience that you have, you're going to be ahead and more opportunities will uh, will become present, if that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Jagadish. You're very welcome. Jagadish, it's uh, wow to you. Jagadish? It looks like Jagadish is unavailable. Yes, sir. Yes, Jagadish, go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. My name is Jagadish. I'm studying seventh grade. At JPHS Hyderabad, my hobbies are reading books, playing games, and watching TV. My future ambition is to become an English teacher. Can I ask one question? Yes, your English is very good. You're already halfway there. Yes, sir. E. E. Do your students like electives or core subjects? <clears throat> Do your students like electives or core subjects? Um, well, Jagadish, that's a very good question. I think any student can like any subject. I think just like you, you like the subjects that you are interested in, right? So if you are interested, if it's exciting, if it's fun, if you're engaged and connected to what you're doing, I think you'll like it if it's a core subject or an elective subject. I think 
it's it's not the topic. I think it's about the experience in the class. So um, some students might like core subject areas, but other students might like elective. But if they're engaged and they're connected and they're active, I think they're going to like it no matter what it is. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Nagalakshmi, are you there? Can you explain to my students what are the commonalities that you have observed uh, during this entire conversation? Sure. <clears throat> um, some, and maybe this will give you some ideas too, but one thing that I notice already is that you have a lot of questions. You have a lot of uh, curiosity. And I think for students in America, students in India, a lot of questions, that is a great place to start. And what I think really good teachers do is they start with student questions. What do students want to know? Everyone loves to learn, whether you're seventh grade, eighth grade, or you're an old man like me. We love to learn new things. I love to read books, watch TV, and play games too. Students in America love to watch TV, play games. They want to grow up to be doctors. They're dancers. All the same activities you love to do, my students love to do the same activities. When you go to school, I bet you want to feel, you want to enjoy school. You want to feel like the work that you do is important. It's interesting. It's beneficial to you. And we're not just doing worksheets and turning them in. It shouldn't feel like going to work. It should feel like going to school to learn. And I think that's one of the things, this is a very unique experience and you should make sure you thank your teacher because what a great idea this is to connect and learn about students and kids from other, um, other places. And what I'd love to do is, uh, Hari, we can talk another time about connecting your students in a classroom with students in America too. And we can have a Zoom where kids ask each other questions. I think that would be great because they know better than we do what the commonalities are. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I <coughs> always look forward to work with you. So, okay. Any more now I want to hear. Yeah, yeah Nagalakshmi. Do you support American education system? Do you have any favorite education system? Mm. That's, it's very interesting. Um, the way it works in America, there's one education system for the whole country, but then every state, Massachusetts, New York, California, Texas, everyone has their own, every state has its own program as well. And every state can teach a little bit differently. Um, I do think, and then in every state, every small town can teach differently too. I think what happens sometimes is not everything is equal. And that's probably the case in a lot of countries, but I, what I support is trying to get things more equal so that all students have the same opportunities. And that's very difficult to do. Um, a lot of the way that schools receive their money is not equal. So some students in some areas have more opportunities than others. And I don't think that's fair. Um, I know you were saying your school, you don't have a lot of technology. Other schools might have a lot of technology. That doesn't seem fair. Everyone, I think, everyone should have the same um, the same equipment, but really what that means is the same opportunities. Great question. Thank you, Navashri. Yeah. So any more questions from the students? Tedip, ask your question. Time is ticking. Hi, sir. My name is Tedip. I'm Shari. My hobbies are reading and playing games. My life and my English to become a software engineer. Can I ask you a question, sir? Yes, please. Are you a student selected on four skills like reasoning, speaking, and reading and writing? 
it was a little hard to hear, but I think what I heard, um, yes, the, the most important things in America, in India, everywhere, I think will always be reading, writing, listening, speaking. My goal is to use technology to support all of those. Use technology to support the listening and the speaking. So if a student has difficulty reading, we can use technology to help that student. If a student doesn't want to stand up in front of the class and speak, they can make a presentation with technology. If a student has difficulty writing, maybe they could record themselves. So I think using technology and digital learning can be a really great tool to give you the same opportunity as someone else, even if you might have difficulty with reading or writing, or maybe you don't wanna stand and present to your class, we can give different options. And I think that for me, technology allows a lot of those options. I do agree with you, Jed. And uh, before we wind up this uh, session, uh, could you please give a, a message to my students? <clears throat> yes, I have a request first off. I want everyone to turn your cameras on. I want to take a picture of the screen. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. So okay. I request all the students to turn your cameras. Turn your cameras on. Ramalakshmi, Na Nagalakshmi, Navisri, Megana, Manasa, turn your camera on. One more, one more. Okay. Oh, here comes one. There's one more, Magana. All right. I want everyone to smile, wave. Thank you very much. Uh, this is very exciting for me. This is, I, I love talking to students in my school. I love talking to students other places. And I do have a message for you. Uh, my message is that the world is very big. The world is so big um, and finding ways to connect anywhere in the world with technology is so powerful. We can learn all the ways that we're similar and we can enjoy all the ways that we're different. We can use technology to become empowered learners, to be creators. I love hearing the stories of wanting to be dancers and writers and teachers and authors. You can do any of those things. I wrote a book. I didn't think I'd write a book. You can write a book. Your teacher can write a book. You can be an athlete. You can be a singer. You can be a dancer. You can be a writer or a doctor. What I, what I really like is that this opportunity right now took a lot of work. Hari, thank you for connecting with me. Students, thank your parents for letting you use their phones or your phones to connect with me. Technology can be such a great way. The world is so big, but you know what? The world is also very small and you can reach anywhere in the world with technology. So thank you so much, Jed, for your valuable time. And we learned a lot of information about digital literacy. And I am looking forward to work with you and with your students. Uh, so thank you so much for your time and bye. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye, sir. Great job. Great questions. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. See you next time. I hope you want to meet some students from my school because I want them to meet you. <laughs>